El objetivo de este evento es la presentación de un nuevo número de la revista Papeles de Economía Española, que lleva por título La política monetaria tras la gran recesión. Eh, tenemos todavía los ecos de las recientes decisiones adoptadas por el Banco Central Europeo, la bajada de tipos de interés, las nuevas inyecciones de liquidez a largo plazo, esta vez condicionadas, la entrada en vigor de rentabilidades negativas eh, de facilidad, en la facilidad de depósito, los avances en los trabajos preparatorios para la adquisición de, activos, de valores respaldados por activos y la prolongación de las subastas de liquidez a tipo fijo y a medio plazo. El libro o el número de papeles de economía tiene una, un doble objetivo. Tiene el objetivo de dar una visión completa de la política monetaria implementada durante la crisis, pero también eh, averiguar o analizar las opciones que se abren ahora en este contexto posterior a lo que se ha dado llamar la gran recesión. Como sabemos, ni el BCE ni la política monetaria pueden por sí solos resolver los problemas que están en la base de la crisis que todavía está atravesando la zona euro. Pero decisiones como las del pasado jueves contribuyen, sin duda, a facilitar la acción de aquellas otras herramientas de política económica que, por su naturaleza, pueden tener más efecto y un efecto más potente y duradero sobre el crecimiento y el empleo. Les deseo unas jornadas muy interesantes y muy eficientes y, y útiles. Muchas gracias. Now we are facing a situation where and there's the title of the publication, Monetary Policy After the Great Recession. So, re Great Recession seems to be behind us. Uh, <laughs> let's touch wood. Uh, and now, uh, a number of questions uh, emerge. Uh, first, well, we should at some point exit because we accept that the uh, monetary policy is uh, still uh, non-conventional and there are some risks associated to the rewards that for the most part we have reaped. And then finally, and this goes a little bit to what we might see in other jurisdictions, what are originally intended as monetary easing measures like QE have actually become measures which are not really monetary easing, but just a place to warehouse debt on the central bank balance sheet so that you can pay it down through time, using the central bank as a form of sinking fund like the Bank of England was used in the 19th century uh, to pay down the Napoleonic war debts in the UK. Now, I think to some extent, all of these things are needed. But I think it becomes very complicated in the euro area because they're unavoidably linked um, and they're linked in different ways. And they raise issues which go well beyond traditional central bank functions. I think we should look at fiscal policy. We are probably asking too much for monetary policy. And uh, if we do that together with a political boost to generate euro bonds that uh, do part of what uh, Hugh was talking about and about providing an instrument for the ECB to do QE without having to argue about it for five or six years, then I think that we'll be in good shape. I would say, argue we are not expected to return to close to 2% in the medium term, even after the decision of last week. Um, the ECB acted, but not as, as aggressive as needed. Um, I think ultimately uh, I would, uh, the ECB should go for uh, 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 an asset uh, a purchase program, which I would design something around like around 15 billion for corporate bonds, eight for ABS, uh, and 12 for EFSF, ESM, EU, EIB bonds. We uh, recently knew yesterday that the IMF is situated, is located in the UK housing market, again, in a big bubble. It's the third or the fourth uh, country in the world uh, in terms of the probability, the likelihood of a bubble measure as price divided by income or uh, return on, on housing. One change in our view uh, since the recession is that monetary policy has a role in dealing with financial stability risks, but we'd like it to be the last, last line of defense. Uh, we're more prepared to use it I think, than we would have been before the crisis, but it's something one does not want to do because it carries a very high cost. Uh, the development of macro prudential policy is one of the most interesting things, I think, to come out of the crisis. It's in its early years. It needs to develop through experience and understanding of when it should act and how it should act. So we need to kind of build up experience and knowledge of, of our reaction function. Okay, thank you very much, John. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here, and we close the act now. Thank you. Thank you.